The more invested you become in Valorant, the more likely you are to improve at quick rates. On the contrary, you may not notice that you're making some specific mistakes throughout your gameplay. Because of this, as you improve, these mistakes won't be fixed simply because you don't even know they are apparent. As you reach higher and higher ranks, they will hold you down much more and truly get in the way of further development. This is the reason we have decided to list our three main mistakes that you could start working on today in order to benefit you as a player. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. What's up guys, my name is Matt and today I will be your guide on all the little mistakes that you've been making. Throughout this video, we will be going over some things that you may or may not be doing throughout your games that are holding you back. Although no two players are the same, we've created this list to cater toward even the more advanced players. Throughout coaching, we have found that these three mistakes tend to never be fixed, no matter what rank you have achieved. So listen closely. This video could be the path toward future success and hopefully assist you to finally reaching the rank that you deserve. But before we get into the guide, let's first continue our tradition and discuss the question of the day. Today's question is an interesting one that will likely yield mixed reactions from players. Would you like to see a level bar that tells you exactly when you're about to rank up or derank? We know that a lot of you CSGO and League of Legends players enjoy the fact that you can't tell when you're going to rank up due to the surprise factor that gets put into the mix. However, thinking that you may rank up and then remaining the same rank after multiple games can be frustrating, and being on the cusp of ranking down but never quite knowing if it's going to happen can be quite stressful too. So, what do you guys think? Is the excitement of ranking up worth taking your journey throughout the ranks in the dark regarding your exact placement? Personally, I'd like to see where I am specifically regarding my rank, only because I like knowing minor information of that nature, but I know that not all people are going to feel the same. So what do you think? Let us know in the comments and we're going to read as many as we can. Right, without taking up any more of your time, let's get right into the top 3 mistakes that might be holding you back from reaching your goals. The number one tip that we found that tends to hold players back the most is revolving gameplay around setups an excessive amount. Although the idea of setups tends to bring to mind certain agents such as Cypher and Killjoy, these few characters are not the exception. Every player, no matter what character they play, has a certain pathing or ability usage mechanic that they like to use for holding sights or pushing on attack. Because this is such a vague concept, let's go over an example that might enhance your understanding of what I'm talking about. Let's say that you're Phoenix defending sight on A Ascent. Perhaps you like to hold behind generator or green box on sight. You have found that hiding there and allowing the enemies to push through choke allows you to flash the enemies and get a few kills very easily. Fair enough. Although uncommon, this can also be seen as a setup of sorts. As long as you are consistently holding the same area and performing the same play in an attempt to get kills, you are technically utilizing a setup toward your advantage. Notice how I said advantage, because this is important. Setups aren't always negative, they generally are created because they pose a strong counter to enemy pushes or holds. When they become a weak point, however, is when they become predictable. If you continue to hold the same area, behind generator in our example for instance, the enemies will soon realize what you're doing and use abilities to nullify your effectiveness. Perhaps in the scenario that we've painted, you would end up being smoked off by an omen or a brimstone or even mollied by an enemy phoenix. No matter what the enemy decides to do, it would be very easy for them to counter to you if they knew exactly where you were every single round. Although this seems like a fairly simple concept, you'd be surprised to see how many players rotate between the same two or three spots all game when holding sights. In order to avoid this situation, one thing you could do is learn more locations to hold. Although these are still considered setups, you would no longer be expected to be in the same area if you learned roughly four or five spots to hold on each site. Furthermore, you will also need to learn how to play off of enemy play. Rather than simply picking a random area to hold based off of your arsenal of locations that you've memorized, try to take in the enemy's gameplay styles during the first few buy rounds. If you notice that they keep smoking the same areas or simply don't check specific angles, well, you should try to play off that. By doing so, you'll be able to pose an element of surprise that will hit your enemy from their weak point, perhaps winning you rounds much easier than if you held another angle. 
Although that doesn't sound too difficult in itself, the idea of taking in information throughout rounds while still focusing on the game can feel daunting for a few players. If you'd like to improve in this area very quickly, well then feel free to visit ProGuides.com where you can speak to life coaches one-on-one -on -one today and learn new mechanics in only a few hours. If you do decide to join us, well then you should take a look at our newly implemented VOD review feature where you can learn hassle-free. Simply submit a video to our coaches and then they will return to you a full review with everything that you can individually work on in order to reach your ranked goals. Moving on from setup-based play, let's discuss teamwork. Although you may have heard many times that teamwork is the key to success, pushing the envelope too far can also bring negative effects into your games. Now don't get us wrong, things like economy and pushes are enhanced by team play. What we're trying to say is to not expect your teammates to be perfect or always do what you think might be the right call. For instance, if you think that your team should buy second round since you guys managed to plant spike and get 3 or 4 kills before losing, don't be angry if someone else doesn't agree. More often than not, if you play solo queue, you're going to need to learn how to adapt to playing with certain teammates that simply don't put their all into the game. As unfortunate as it is, many people tend to care only about themselves when playing without truly considering the situation of their teammates. Ultimately, if you don't get used to this, you may fall into a state of tilt that could lead to a long sequence of lost rounds and potentially the loss of a winnable game. In order to make this portion of the video beneficial, let's go over some common scenarios that you will encounter in solo queue and how you should deal with each of them respectively. First off, there is economy. As we just briefly skimmed over the topic, you may have noticed how economy can truly impact your games. More specifically, if people refuse to buy or save as a team, nothing you do as an individual can change their decision. At most, you can ask them to follow the team's lead, but if they refuse, don't try to push your opinion on them too hard. Most often, the situation that occurs in solo queue is one player buying while the rest of your team is forced to save due to a limited economy. If this happens in your game, as bad as this may seem, your best option is to allow that teammate to entry frag. This, however, is very different from baiting. Although you want to let the player with the weapon go in first, you want to push in right behind them in order to secure a trade in the instance that he dies. Ultimately, the reason for allowing them to entry frag in the first place is because of this scenario. If you are able to secure a trade due to one of your teammates challenging with a weapon, someone else will easily be able to pick up the gun after it drops. This will create the most beneficial situation, where no matter the outcome, someone will still have a weapon as you push onto sight. Moving on from economy, the other scenario where we often see people focus on teamwork too much is post-bomb plant holds. In these scenarios, players tend to trust their teammates too little and, because of this, attempt to micromanage their plays. For instance, in a 2 vs 1 situation where you and your teammate are alive with the bomb planted, the best play would be to simply hold sight together and trade for each other. Many people, however, tend to hunt kills. If one of your teammates does this in-game, rather than yelling at them to hold back, you should instead maybe push with them. This is because, although holding together would be the best situation, pushing together is still better than one player hunting and the other holding sight. Ultimately, what you should take from this section of the video is that no matter how much you try, you won't always be listened to in-game. Rather than becoming frustrated with your team, change your playstyle based on your team's play and simply deal with the situation that is presented to you to the best of your capabilities. The last mistake that we will be presenting to you today is trying to climb too fast. Now, I get it. Reaching higher ranks as fast as possible is the reason we all focus on our rank matches so much. But taking in too many things at once could overwhelm you in-game and cause you to improve much less. For instance, if you haven't played many FPS games in the past, coming into Valorant and trying to learn advanced tactics such as flanking, common hold layouts and post-bomb fakes and retakes, alongside tactics catered towards beginner players such as mastering the minimap and learning when it's best to walk or run, could cause you to forget everything you've learned in the heat of the moment. As you go about becoming better throughout the game, you should take everything step by step. More often than not, strategies build off one another. So, knowing how to perform entry-level strategies very well will significantly help you when trying to improve in more advanced areas of the game. Basically, the general tip you should follow here is don't try to learn more strategies until those you are currently working on become cemented into your gameplay so much that you just don't need to think about them anymore. 
For instance, if practicing your walking mechanics, you should be able to decide when it's beneficial to run or walk without having to look at the map. After you've mastered something like that, you could move on to something like mastering smokes rather than jumping right into advanced lineups or other things of that nature. If you are still feeling a little lost regarding what to practice, here is a little list we set up to guide you on your journey. First of all, focus on general mechanics such as shooting and recoil. Second, focus on economy. Third, move on to team play regarding smokes and ability usage. And lastly, focus on combining these tactics together for the best possible performance in game. Now, this isn't a black and white list, but it is a general layout that could give you an idea regarding where you should go next regarding your current skill level. I get it, this tip can be hard to implement into your gameplay because you have a strong desire to improve, but we promise you that you will see significant drops in the amount of time it takes you to learn new tactics when taking this tip to heart. You should take your time, master your strategies, and then you'll rank up in no time at all. As you reach the higher ranks, you might begin to realize that the mistakes we've presented to you today may have in fact been holding you back without you even noticing. If that's the case, then try to slowly remove them from your gameplay and you will be sure to see significant improvements over time. In addition, we feel like it is important to mention that you should focus on removing mistakes from your gameplay before actually trying to learn new tactics. Because of this, you should start working on the tips that we discussed in this video right away in order for the information you learn in the future to help you as much as possible and be the most effective towards helping you on your journey to success. Take each task up one by one, and once you've mastered them all, it should be smooth sailing from there on out. With that said, good luck, stay safe, and I wish you all great games.